My name is Michel Reinen. I'm a vascular surgeon from the Rijnstater Hospital in Arnhem, which is located in the Netherlands. And beside that, I'm a professor at the University of Twente in Enschede, also the Netherlands. Well, the ANCO study was a prospective observational international multicenter registry study that was led by uh, my colleague Jean-Paul de Vries from Europe and Dr. William Jordan from the US. And it enrolled patients that were treated with endo anchors um, in adjunct to EVAR from April 2012 to December 2019. And these patients were followed for five years. Um, still are, some are still in follow-up. Um, and for this particular analysis, we looked at patients that had a wide inferoneal aortic neck. And that's defined a neck diameter of 28 millimeters or more. What is known about long-term EVAR outcomes is that there is a relation of the hostile neck anatomy and unfavorable outcomes. And a wide then neck diameter, which is typically defined as a diameter of 28 millimeters or more, is one of the definitions of a hostile neck. When we look at the literature and what has been published on wide necks, we see that wide necks are related to more reinterventions, more sac expansion, more type 1 analytics, and also more ruptures. So there is an unmet need in the treatment of this patient group. Another problem with standard EVER in wide necks is that wide necks are related to neck expansion in time. Um, this is very likely to be multifactorial. So it's progression of disease, but also the outward force of the endograft. And independent risk factors for ex second neck expansion are a wide neck and excessive oversizing. Overall, in the anchor registry, there were 1,032 patients enrolled. 771 of these were the so-called primary arm, in which e uh, endo anchors were used in adjunct to EVAR um, to either treat complication during surgery or preventive. And then there were 261 in the revision arm. And for this particular an uh, analysis, we took the primary arm. And in this patient group, we looked for patients that had an inferior neck diameter between 28 and 32 uh, millimeters. Overall, there were 72 patients in this cohort. Um, and consequently, there were 699 patients with a non-wide inferior neck. Well, when we look at this cohort, um, Patients were aged 73 years old, um, almost 90% were male. Um, and when you look at the baseline anatomy, the inferior neck diameter was on average 29.5 millimeters. They had a considerable neck length of 18 millimeters. 23% had a conical neck and the angulation was 33 degrees. The aneurysm itself had a maximum diameter on average of 61 millimeters. When we looked at the Treatment these patients got, uh, the vast majority, 71%, was treated with the Endurant device. And the remaining were treated with other devices, uh, but mostly with either the Zenit or the endograft. We have followed these patients three years. Uh, in the end, 42 patients actually got their three year follow up. So it's relatively a small sample size. But then when you look at the results, they were very positive. There was a freedom from aneurysm related mortality of almost 99%. There were no conversions. The freedom from secondary interventions overall was uh, 87%. There were no ruptures. And then we're looking at more uh, specifically at the neck related complications. The freedom from migration in this group was 100%. The freedom from type 1 endo leaks was 98.5%. And in fact, there was only one patient that had a procedural type 1 endo leak that spontaneously disappeared on the next uh, imaging modality um, and did not come back afterwards. And consequently, there were no reinterventions performed for type 1A endo leak. So these were all very good results. What we do know nowadays is that um, sec dynamics after EVAR are important as there seems to be a relation between sec regression and long-term survival. When we look at the SAC behavior after EVAR in this group, we saw at three years that 60% had a SAC regression, 30% had a stable aneurysm, and 8.7% had a growing aneurysm. These were two out of 23 patients. And when you compare this to a more, um, to another patient group with a more beneficial anatomy, you see that the same rates have been reached as in these groups. Well, the take home messages are that. Um, White necks are a risk factor for late failure of EVAR and with the use of endo anchors, 
the neck related complications could be reduced. There are some limitations, however. Um, it's a small patient cohort uh, with a limited number with actual three year follow up. And also, the imaging protocol was per standard of care of the hospitals, which means that sometimes duplex ultrasound was used instead of CT scans. And this is the main reason that these data need to be confirmed with a prospective comparative trial. Um, later this year, we will start this trial, which is called the Hercules trial. And in this trial, we will enroll 300 subjects globally, uh, both in the US and Europe, uh, and they will be randomized between treatment with the endurance endograft or the endurance endograft uh, with endo anchors as adjunctive treatments. The composite endpoint at one year will be freedom from type 1 and the leak or migration or aneurysm sac growth and patients will be followed for five years follow-up. And hopefully this will confirm the data that we've seen in the ankle registry.